and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this super cute pencil roll. Now I'm using mine for colored pencils but you can actually customize this to fit other fun objects in here like knitting needles or crochet hooks. So feel free to have fun with this project. Let's go ahead and get started. For this project, you're gonna want some batting, or honestly, if you're using a canvas or a thicker fabric, I would just skip the interfacing altogether. You could also use a really light um, weight interfacing. I just use leftover quilt batting because I like to use up my scraps. You'll also need some fabric for the inside of your bag, and both of these will be used on the inside. Some fabric for the outside, some fabric for your tie, and then some binding fabric. And then you'll also need some basic sewing supplies, You'll also want some kind of elastic. I'm gonna be using this three quarter inch elastic, but honestly, if I could get some elastic right now, I would actually prefer one to one and a half inch elastic because it's just a little bit wider. Um, but this is all I have in my stash and I can't get any more. If you don't know why I can't get any more, look up today's date in history and find out what was going on. It's currently April 6th, 2020. Exact cutting instructions for all of these will be in the description box below this video, so just click the little show more link and you'll see information on all of the exact sizing that you need for all of your pieces. I'll also put up a PDF download that you can get if you prefer written instructions and all of that will be in the description box below the video. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So for the outside of my bag, I thought it would be fun to piece together three different fabrics. If you don't wanna do that, you can just cut one piece of fabric that's eight and a half tall by approximately 22 inches wide. I'm gonna be using these three colors because I think it's just a little bit more fun. So these two outer pieces are three inches wide and then this one is three and a half inches wide. But any combination of fabric that you would like to put together to get you to that eight and a half by 22 and a half inch is fine. So I'm gonna take this piece and we're just gonna lay it right sides down together here and you can pin or clip these in place if you want but we're just going to run a stitch using a one quarter of an inch seam allowance along this top edge and then once we do that we're going to do the same thing with this bottom one again another quarter of an inch here and then I'll press it and meet you back here All right, so here is our finished outside panel. And like I said, you can just use one solid sheet of fabric if you don't wanna do this little stripey bit. So we're done with that. We're gonna go ahead and set this aside. Next, we're gonna work on the tie for our bag. And so we're gonna take the short edges of the tie and just fold them in by a quarter of an inch and press those. Then starting at one end, we're gonna fold the sides in so that they meet in the middle like this. And then we're gonna fold it in half one more time to create a nice skinny little tie for our bag. Take it over to our sewing machine and just sew down this open edge here. And I sew right along the edge, just making sure you're getting both sides to secure it. So here is our finished little strap here. Now, if you don't wanna make your own strap, you can of course always use a piece of ribbon or um, anything else. If you do a piece of ribbon, I like to cut it at a 45 degree angle. And if it's a really fray kind of ribbon, I will run a little zigzag stitch down the um, end just to kind of keep it from fraying. We're gonna go ahead and set this aside now. And next we're gonna get our piece of fabric that is for the inside. And this one is 22 inches long by three and a half inches wide. And we're gonna fold this in half lengthwise and just press it. And then we're gonna take it over to our sewing machine and along this folded edge, about a one eighth of an inch in, we're just gonna run a stitch all the way down that just to kind of make this edge look a little bit more finished. This is gonna be the flap that our pencils slide into. All right, so here's our finished strip and I just ran a stitch right along the top of this so we can kind of set this aside for just a second. Next, we're gonna take our piece of batting and we're going to lay it on our table. We're gonna also grab our lining fabric and if you have directional print, just make sure it's going right side up here. We're just gonna line that on to our batting. And then I'm gonna take some 505 spray based here. This is just a temporary adhesive. I'm just gonna spray a little bit on there. Honestly, this is just to hold it in place while we're gonna be adding our elastic strapping here. 
The next thing I'm going to do is place my ruler at four and a quarter inches from the bottom edge of my fabric here and just make a mark right along my fabric just so that I have a straight line to copy when I'm adding my elastic. And then I'm going to start about two inches in from my end over here and I'm just going to go ahead and make a little mark at two inches. And then I'm going to make a mark every three eighths of an inch from there forward. So one, two, three. So one, two, three. Every one of these little lines is an eighth of an inch. One, two, three. And I'm just going to do that all the way down this. And that is going to be where I'm going to be sewing my elastic. So just keep going until you have them all marked. And by the way, I'm using a friction erasable pen. And this will come off as soon as I'm done with heat so I am done marking all of my little uh, marks here and then I did stop two inches from this other end as well. Now I just wanted to point out really quickly if you're making this for say knitting needles or crochet hooks or anything else other supplies that might be a little bit wider feel free at this point to make these little sewing marks any size that you need you can totally customize this little roll pack. So now that we've got that done I'm going to grab my piece of elastic and the first thing I'm going to do is line it up with this raw edge down here and you can put a pin or a little clip down there to keep that in place. And I'm going to run a stitch just up and down right here just to kind of secure it. The next thing I'm going to do is run my first stitch where I have my first line. And then when I'm done with that, I'm going to take my little pencil here, pop it in here and kind of mark where I need it to be here. Hold that with my finger and I just will kind of press this one over as I go and then add a stitch and then do that again, add a stitch and keep going all the way down these. Now, like I said, if you wanted to use something that was a little bit bigger, then use that tool as your guide for how wide to make your elastic band. And I am back stitching on these just to give them a little bit of extra strength because they will get tugged on as you're doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and just model that right there and then I'll just fold it over with my fingers and make my next stitch. And I'm just going to keep adding these little loops as I go until I'm all the way done with my elastic. So here is our finished inside piece and I got 48 little pieces for pencils there and then I do have some extra elastic here so I'm going to go ahead and just chop that off. I did want to make sure you had enough elastic so that you didn't run out and you can make it all the way across um, depending on what size pencils or whatever you're using are here. Next we're going to go ahead and take our piece that we had folded in half and just top stitch and we're going to line the raw edges up along with the raw edges of our bag. So here's our top stitched edge and here is our raw edge down here. And I'm going to go ahead and just place a couple clips on here just to hold that in place. Next I'm going to make some marks on here just to kind of keep it from flopping open and so probably about every, I don't know, five or so inches, find a place where you have a seam right here and kind of line that up and then just make a little mark down here. That way your seam down here will line up with one of the seams up here. And then repeat that process, I don't know, like I said, about every five or so inches. It doesn't have to be exact, especially if your holes aren't exact. Actually, that's probably good because this one will get caught in the binding. Okay, next we're going to take this over to our sewing machine and I'm just going to sew back and forth a couple of times down these. That'll just keep this bottom flap from coming unflapped when it's being rolled. So I've gone ahead and just put my little sewing marks in there and now we're kind of done with this side. The next thing we're going to do is flip our piece over here. We're going to take our outside fabric and line that up on there. 
And I'm going to go ahead and spray it again with a little bit of spray basing just to kind of hold it in place while we're adding everything else. Next we're going to take our fabric tie that we made and like I mentioned you could use a ribbon or something else if you like. We're going to take this we're going to line one of the ends of the tie up with the edgier bag and then run it all the way down here to the other end and just try and kind of center it. If you'd like to measure four and a quarter inches is center. I'm just going to eyeball it and I'm going to place a pin right here. So I've just pinned this in place and approximately one and three quarters inch in from this edge. So about right there, we're going to be sewing back and forth just to attach our strap to our bag. And basically what you want to avoid is sewing through this first pencil loop. And you can actually feel it through the fabric when you're over at your machine. So one and three quarters inches should be somewhere right around here. So I'm just gonna take that over and just do a little stitching to secure our tie. Here's our completed tie and you probably saw me get a little fancy there and I just sewed a square with an X in the middle and I just went over it a couple of times. It'll just give this tie a little bit of extra strength. All right, we are almost done with this project. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the outside of our bag to the side and we're gonna work on the binding. And so I've just got two pieces that I cut at two and a half inches wide by the width of fabric. And I'm gonna go ahead and just find the ends on both of those and lay them right sides together. And then I'm just going to sew right down this edge using about a quarter of an inch seam. And really quickly, I'm going to chop, chop off our selvage edge there. So just sew down this edge, a quarter of an inch seam. And then we're going to take this over to the ironing board and we're going to press it in half lengthwise, wrong sides together. So it looks like that. Alright, so here is our finished binding and like I said, I just folded it in half right sides together and for this seam, I just pressed the seam open, folded it in half and kept on going. So here is my folded edge, down here is my raw edge and I'm just going to line the raw edge of my binding up with the raw edge of my bag here. And I'm going to go ahead and just clip this in place just this first bit just to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna take it over my sh machine and I'm gonna start sewing it down with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, but I'm gonna start down here. So leave all of this just loose. So here we are at our machine and here's our loose tail and I'm just gonna scoot that up and I'm gonna start somewhere down here. And with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to start adding my binding and I am gonna back stitch at my starting point. Now when I'm about a quarter of an inch away from my end here, I'm going to lift my presser foot with my needle still in my down position and just turn to about a 45 degree angle and then just back stitch here to secure it. Next we're going to turn our work to the side and I'm gonna just place my finger right here and with my right hand, I'm gonna pull my binding up and away from me so that my raw edge of my binding is now lined up with the raw edge of the right side of my project. Then I'm going to pull it down towards myself to fold that over and you're gonna end up with this little kind of triangle at the top here. We're gonna go ahead and put that back in the machine and just continue sewing on and I do start right from the very edge. Now one thing to be careful about while you're working on this project is that you don't sew over your ties. They're on the other end of my bag right now, but I just wanted to notate that uh, so that you don't accidentally do that as you're going. All right, so here we are and we've got this tail here and we've got this tail here. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is I just kind of like to eyeball kind of somewhere in the middle there, which looks like about here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just trim that off. Excuse me, Jax. <laughs> okay. 
So that can be laying right there. And next we're gonna take this piece and overlap the two by a quarter of an inch. Just make sure everything's nice and tight. You don't want any looseness up here. Overlap by about a quarter of an inch. And mark that. I'm kind of eyeballing it, but you can certainly uh, mark it if you want with a ruler. And then I'm gonna cut this piece off as well. And next we're gonna take these two pieces and just lay them flat against each other like this and then open them up like that. And then we're gonna take these over to the sewing machine and using a quarter of an inch seam, sew right across this and then I'll press that seam open and then we can continue attaching our binding to our project. Whenever I'm working with a smaller project like this, it usually helps to kind of fold it in half so you don't have as much pull on these ends. Now I'll just go ahead and press this open right here and then fold it in half. Just kind of finger press everything and if you did everything right, it should lay nice and flat. We're gonna go ahead and finish attaching it to our project now. All right, now our binding is attached to the inside. We're gonna go ahead and attach it to the outside. So all I'm gonna do, and you can take this over to your ironing board and press if you like. I'll probably just finger press it, but you're gonna press it up and then just flip it around to the front side of your project like this. And then right along this edge, about an eighth of an inch seam allowance, we're gonna attach our binding to the outside of our back. Now we're coming up to our first corner here. So what I like to do is fold up the bottom and then using my finger, kind of just press the side over and you just want them to kind of meet in a nice mitered corner right here. So I take one stitch into this next piece uh, with my needle in the down position. I'm gonna raise my presser foot, turn my work, and then I'll just keep on sewing and I'm gonna repeat that process on all four corners. And here we go, we are done with our pencil holder. The last thing to do is to just add all of our little pencils in, roll it up and start having fun. guys that is it for this fun tutorial I hope you enjoyed it if you did please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe and that way I know to keep making fun projects for you thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you next time